Welcome to Pioneers in Payments, where payments experts share their insights. Now, here's our host, Donna Blum. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Pioneers in Payments. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Lou Grilly from PSCU. Welcome, Lou. Uh, thank you for having me on. I've been looking forward to this, Donna. Thank you so much for joining us. And for those who aren't familiar with PSCU, it is the payment system for credit unions, correct? Correct. <laughs> We're a not-for-profit owned by our owner member credit unions. Uh, so we provide payment technology to those owner credit unions. We also provide services to uh, um, several community banks as well. Wonderful. And Lou, would you also just tell us a little bit about your background in the payments industry? Um, sure. Where do I start? So first, within PSU, I am fortunate enough to be in the innovation group. So we look at things that are outside of the typical scope, scope of product management. Um, two areas that I am focused in. One is real-time payments. So I'm also on the U.S. Faster Payments Council. Uh, several of your previous guests are colleagues of mine on the Faster Payments Council. My um, other area of focus is blockchain and everything related to distributed ledger, crypto, NFTs, Web3, all of which, uh, as it relates to credit unions and community banks. Um, I'm named on a patent which was issued for using blockchain for a loyalty program. Um, my payments career also included time at FIS and at MX, MXO. It's been a fun ride so far. That's great. And from your LinkedIn profile, it also indicates that you're an author and a blogger and a speaker. So that's quite impressive. I'd like to stay busy. <laughs> well, that's great. Okay, so my first question for you, that this podcast is really just to kind of um, distill everything that's happening in the payments industry today and just kind of leave our, our uh, viewers with a few key takeaways. So if you had to uh, name what you believe is the most notable trend in the industry today, what would that be? So I tend to look back through history to get a perspective of where we are today. And the, the trend that really floors me every time I, I, I keep coming back to it is we keep adding new payment rails and at a faster rate than ever before. Um, again, I, I look at history. So ACH was first formed in 1972, and it took a little while um, to, to build up ubiquity. And there was no real big evolution until 2016. And then from 2016 on, we got all these new rails that started with same day ACH followed by Visa Direct, a year later, MasterCard Send. One year after that was the Clearinghouse's real-time payment service. Uh, following that was Zelle. This year we add FedNow. That's six new rails in what, seven years. There are, in addition, those are all bank related um, payment rails, but there are so many other ways to move money that have started within that same time frame. Uh, in addition to the one of the, those that I just mentioned, there's PayPal and Venmo and Cash App and Google Pay and Apple Pay. And since I work on blockchain, blockchain is not even close to realizing its potential to move payments, to move crypto, to move fiat-backed stablecoin. Um, to borrow an expression from someone that I have a lot of respect for, Mark Seafright, the speed at which payments is evolving will never be as slow as it is today, meaning things are just going to keep moving forward and they're just going to keep moving faster. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, too, is that all of those older technologies or uh, rails still exist as well. So Absolutely. we never get rid of anything. <laughs> So anyways, um, moving on to the next question, what would you say is the greatest opportunity today for organizations that process payments? Uh, um, so again, looking back at history to help put in context what we're seeing today, I'm gonna, I know this sounds kind of trite, but I see payroll as the largest opportunity. Payroll was the driver for financial institutions to adopt ACH in the 70s and 80s, basically to eliminate Friday paychecks being handed out to people. I believe that payroll will once again be the driver of, and, and just to make that point, of our owner credit unions that have already adopted real-time payments that I've spoken to, every one of them cited payroll as the first transaction that they saw posting to the core. Almost all of them said, within hours of going live, 
with the service. Like that same morning, they started seeing um, transactions. And these are both on-demand pay, uh, Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber drivers, other 1040 workers getting paid up to multiple times a day. But it's also earned wage access, W-2 employees getting paid at the end of a shift. And then with FedNow, um, add in treasury payments, which means payroll of all of the federal workers in the U.S. and Social Security checks and unemployment benefits, sort of payments in lieu of paychecks. And, and I, I just want to kind of um, punctuate this with why I think this is an opportunity, why businesses, corporations, government, basically any entity that pays people will benefit from faster payments. The um, my limited understanding of payroll is based on where I work here. The company funds payroll like Monday or Tuesday, sends the money to the payroll company. The payroll company disperses it to all the various banks and credit unions that we belong to um, um, on Wednesday or Thursday so that they can be pre-noted. A better model for the company is to keep its money invested or use it for other needs Monday through Thursday and then send it out real time on Friday morning. I know there's a lot, when we talk about real-time payments and faster payments, there's a lot of focus on incoming payments, right? Everybody wants their money faster, but being able to send money out faster and having uh, verification it could send out, holding onto your money longer and not sending it out until the very moment that it needs to get there, that um, is the benefit, I think, that is going to transform the way organizations um, use real-time payments. That's great. And there's obviously a lot of growth still um, that that can occur in the B2B area, right? So Absolutely. we're seeing more adoption, obviously, with consumers, um, but there is a huge amount of growth that we're expecting to see eventually uh, for businesses. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, being able to hold onto the business's money longer before paying it to their vendors, their suppliers, et cetera, um, utility payments. Um, so absolutely, it's a benefit for businesses to hold onto their money longer and then get verification that it has been received by the intended recipient. Right. Okay, so that's the greatest opportunity for organizations that are processing payments. What is the greatest challenge today? I'm slightly biased because of where I sit on the U.S. Faster Payments Council in the directory models work group. So I'm going to go with a lack of a directory to inform the sender over what payment rail the recipient can be reached. So let's say an insurance company wants to get a disbursement out that wants to pay a claim and get the money to the insured's credit union account, community bank account instantly. Um, then the, the sender, the insurance company in this case, has to know, does the financial institution of that um, intended recipient support RTP or FedNow so that the insurance company can use real-time payments? And if so, which one do they support? Does the um, financial institution support push-to-debit card uh, so the insurance company could use Visa Direct or MasterCard Send? And again, which one? Is the dollar amount over what Zelle allows? And does that financial institution even participate in Zelle? The burden is on the sender to figure out which rail to use. And there's currently no great way to do that. There's no directory which indicates that I prefer to receive my money via um, real-time payments or, via, or over, um, over debit rails. Um, and again, there's a group at the U.S. Faster Payments Council that is working on tackling this issue. That's great. Uh, it gives more flexibility, right? Like, um, yeah, and, and more uh, customer centric that way, too. Exactly. OK, so um, if you were to evaluate everything that's happening in the industry today and provide your silver bullet piece of advice to organizations that are processing payments, what would that be? Uh, you know, what makes that question so difficult is because Watching previous, um, watching previous episodes of this video podcast, there have already been so many great answers given to this question. So Reed Lutanen spoke about listening to the customer is the silver bullet. Steve Mott uh, spoke about focusing on small business. Elizabeth McQuarrie spoke about education and networking, attending conferences. Steve Wasserman said the silver bullet is timing, start now, don't wait. So I'm gonna take a slightly different approach the silver bullet is the user experience. So nobody 
consumers, credit union members, community bank customers, business customers should ever have to know how it works, right? Nobody should um, have to know that they want to pick same day ACH versus FedNow versus the clearinghouse. And on top of that, there's a whole new function that has been introduced as part of real-time payments, which is called request to pay. Basically an invoice or bill sent by the biller over real-time payments rails. All faster payments are push payments, meaning the payor sends money to the payee. But the request for payments is a way for the payee to say to the payor, hey, send me some money. And this also needs to be folded into the user experience in mobile online banking. And that's why I believe the silver bullet is going to be the user experience. The, the end user doesn't know anything about what a FedNow or the clearinghouse is, but instead just should have to focus on when they want the money to be there. And, and um, I've heard it, I didn't make this up, although um, I wish I did, um, that it's like the Amazon checkout process. Do you want it shipped two to three days? Well, then it's free. Do you want your money to get there the next day? Uh, then maybe it's a little bit more. Do you want the money to get there in seconds and get confirmation that that was received? Then it's a little bit more than that. So the user experience, obviously ubiquity among financial institutions in order to be able to receive payments is part of that, but the way the user experience is implemented at those financial institutions, I believe is gonna be the silver bullet. That's great. Do you mind if I kind of pitch one other question at you? Um, <laughs> Because of your expertise and experience with with faster payments, um, obviously there's. I think I heard just the other day that right now across the globe there's about 60 real time payment rails, and um, you know, and FedNow uh, is being introduced this month to um, to the U.S. Um, but I'm kind of curious about interoper uh, interoperability, like. You know, if you had a crystal ball, if you could predict the future, what do you think the future is going to look like with all of these real time rails eventually becoming interoperable? You know, so RTP and FedNow and then also with all of the other global, um, you know, other real time rails across the globe. But what, what kinds of thoughts do you have about that? I, I um and I, I want to throw one more thing into the mix, and that is blockchain for money movement also. But um, yes, cross-border payments, international payments, international remittances still is clunky and expensive and slow. Um, but I do know that SWIFT, um, which is one something that we like to point to as if I want to get money over to a family in the Ukraine, it goes from my credit union to a correspondent bank or corporate credit union to... Um, the, to a bigger bank, correspondent bank like Chase or something like that. Um, and then over through the SWIFT network to the equivalent bank in uh, the National Bank of Ukraine, and then down to their community bank or credit union, taking two, three, four days, costing $35, whatever for that. There's got to be a better way. And there is a better way. And I know that SWIFT is working on uh, much faster alternatives, including blockchain, the clearinghouse is working on cross-border payments. The, the U.S. Faster Payments Council has a work group dedicated to cross-border payments. And I believe that blockchain will definitely be in the mix of this and maybe at the heart of how to move money faster. Right? if I want to today, if I want to get money over to this family in the Ukraine, they may not even be able to get to their bank um, or an ATM in order to get that money out. But I can send, say, a stable coin from my digital wallet to their digital wallet within minutes uh, for fractions of what it costs to use a third party uh, like Western Union. So the future is going to, in, we've become so much more global. So moving money globally is just only going to increase. And once we can get some of the time and cost out of it, the uh, money flowing between countries, between people in various global locations is just going to be on the increase. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, just something that I've been curious about myself, and I figure, well, if I'm curious, I'm sure there's others out there. Well, Lou, I do have one last question for you. If our audience wanted to learn more, where would they go? Um, all right. So PSCU has a section called Insights, kind of our blog, with some great thought leadership there. So check out PSCU.com slash insights. And you've heard me talking a couple of times now about blockchain and DeFi 
check out PSU.com slash crypto. Um, the U.S. Faster Payments Council has some great resources. I have contributed to some of those. Even if you're not a member, there is access. Uh, go to the resources tab at fasterpaymentscouncil.org. And I post not as frequently as I would like to on LinkedIn. So uh, if you want to reach out to me and find me, I'm Lou Grilly, L-O-U. G-R-I-L-L-I. There's more than one on LinkedIn, so look for the one in St. Petersburg, Florida, and connect with me there. Okay, that's wonderful. Well, Lou, I just want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your insights about what's happening today in the industry as well as what you think might be happening in the future. And I also just want to thank all of our guests for watching today. Have a great day. Thanks, and thanks for having me on, Donna.